Hello there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Um, I'm going to do a fun journal page today because I saw a quote on Pinterest this morning. It was actually one of those cute signs that you might buy and hang in your house. And the quote on it said, slow down, happiness is trying to catch you. And I thought that was really fun. And um, I am going to use some crayons today. These are just Crayola Twistables. You can use any type of crayons you want. I'm working in a um, Canson Mixed Media Journal. And that is provided by Oriental Trading Company, H A P P Happy H A P P I N E S S. I wrote down my quote and everything because I can't think and do a video at the same time apparently. Um, but I, I don't know what I did with it. <laughs> I was just looking, it's like, well, I found my coffee, there's my coffee, here's my supplies, where the heck is my quote? I don't know. Um, so I thought it'd be fun to kind of do some resist techniques and um, use these crayons. I know, like, there's those paper crafting crayons, but it, for some reason, it just, they just look an awful lot like this to me, and I, and Crayola products always seem to be really good quality. Uh, there's a great selection of Crayola products over at Oriental Trading if you want to check it out. Um, they have all these special effects crayons now that will work on construction paper. These have, like, four colors on the tip. These are kind of fun. Um, you know, and there's neon ones, and there's so many cool crayons nowadays that, I think this is kind of a fun medium, and, and a company like Crayola makes really great products, so hey, why not? Why not try those and have some fun? Um, especially in our art journal, where we're not really worried about archival stuff so much. I'm not saying it's not archival, I'm just saying that I'm not going to worry about it in my art journal. Um, so here I am going to do a technique that's kind of fun, um, and I'm going to heat this with a heat gun, and I've got a little silicone tool here that I can blend with. And this will uh, help fill in the tooth of the paper. So see, you can just blend that right, right in if you heat it up. You might want to do that, you might not want to. It's completely up to you. It's just a technique to try. These uh, silicone tipped, uh, these are just rubber, or sil they're actually silicone tipped tools. The thing I find that a lot of times you can find good bargains like on brushes and tools and stamps and stuff, just by looking in the kids' craft section. And we're going to be using a lot of kids' craft stuff today. Because, and the thing is crazy, it's usually about the same thing, but since, you know, a lot of kids' craft, but not a lot of adults do, it's got more mass appeal, so that's why the prices are lower. They could sell more of it. Plus, you know, parents aren't going to spend $20 on a stencil for their kids, but they'll spend, you know, $4. So, you know, they're also charging what the market can bear, you know? I mean, that's kind of how companies companies work. All right. So, yeah, I've blended a little bit. I'm not going to get too fussy with it. Um, and slow down. Happiness is trying to catch you. Why don't I um, do some other, some other different techniques? Happiness is, do a cursive. And trying, T-R-Y-I-N. To maybe do catch and some different colors. And then maybe you over here with maybe some metallics. And we're going to do another resist technique on top of this, which um, that'd be kind of fun too. And then you can go in and doodle and fill it in and do whatever you want to your letters. Um, before I, before I fill in mine, I'm actually going to use a little Mod Podge and I'm going to do a resist. And another kid's product that I really love is foam stamps. Uh, they work really good to add some texture over a large area, to add some cool pattern. I'm using some Mod Podge and I took a makeup sponge, you know, those little makeup wedges, and I just clipped it onto a, uh, just regular old clothespin so that I can use it. Oh my gosh, I'm going to have to wax paper this lid that was almost sealed on permanently. All right, so I'm just going to get some of the glue or Mod Podge. You can use white glue if you don't have Mod Podge. And I'm just going to tap on to some of these foam stamps. They have a lot of foam stamps over at Oriental Trading as well, so you want to check that out. Their inventory changes quite a bit, so um, so it's always good to check back. Or if you like something to get it, because 
um because it does change they do they do uh, come up with new stuff quite frequently and get rid of the old stuff and put stuff on sale i always check the sale section because you can find some good bargains there now this isn't going to give me this will give me a slight resist it's not going to be super bold but um but it will be cool looking you can make your own your own uh foam stamps too just by taking foam stickers and sticking them on like a block or something that works really well too the key is to keep an eye on where you've already print where you've already put some of the resist so you don't um get a big jumble of overlaid colors if you don't want it i didn't clean this stamp very well look at my sponge <laughs> i probably used watercolor crayons on them or something and i left a bunch i had a bunch left over or something but I find foam stamps to be very versatile and uh, very inexpensive. And um, I think with the art journal, it's a perfect place to play with your supplies. Your kids' supplies or you know, get them an art journal. Let them play, too. And then maybe... I don't want to mix the stripes and geometrics with the uh, circles and florals, so I'm just going to go with this other floral here. And since uh, foam stamps are also really good for acrylic paint, you could use an acrylic paint to do this. And a little bit off the edge there, and maybe one more off the edge up here. So now what I'm going to do is let this dry, and uh, we'll come back, and I'm also going to let this dry, and I'm also going to just add a little detail and doodling inside the word you, and uh, we're going to come back and do a resist. We're going to do an overlay with alcohol ink, not alcohol ink, India ink. There we go, Bombay India ink. Be back in a minute, and we will do some more to this page. All right, I did a little bit of doodling in there, and this is pretty dry. It's not completely dry, but I'm going to go ahead and add some doodling around my um, stamped area. You can see where it's a little bit glossy there, where it catches a light. So I'm just going to use some of these fun special effects crayons to add some doodling around some of these um, some of these shapes that are not directly overlaying any of my words. Just, I think it's going to look really cool when I add the ink. And if I twist my crayon, I get kind of like a cool spiral of color. So this is a kind of a wild and crazy, uh, wild and crazy thing. Even though well, actually, it does kind of go with the sentiment because when you think, you know, you know, this is so busy and so bright, but it, you know, for a page is trying to sh show you to slow down. I don't know. Maybe I think that whole the juxt juxtaposition is kind of cool. Juxtaposition. You just got to use a big word. Something else I've wanted to try is um, shaving some of these down. So um, you get kind of like a. Eventually, you kind of get like a blunt blunt tip when you're working with this. So what I'm going to do is kind of shave some of that off. I think I'll try melting it in a second. I, I saw Don, Donna Downey do that in a video. That was kind of cool. Maybe throw it somewhere over here where it's not going to obstruct my words too much. And then since I've sharpened that, I can go over this and make that a little bit crisper. I want to make sure everything shows up. I don't even know what colors I'm going to resist over yet. We'll see. I just wanted to make sure that was nice and sharp and crisp. All right, now let me try heating up some of those, those, uh, I don't know, they might blow them right away. I'm gonna try to heat up some of those crinkles. Yeah, it wants to blow them right away, doesn't it? Uh, that's too bad. Where's my little thing? Maybe, oh, well, these I'm heating up all right. Oh, that's kind of cool. It's just hard to get them to hold still while you, while you heat them up. Hmm, I'll have to work on that. Maybe uh, work over a hot plate or a candle warmer or something. Cause that's cool. I would like to be able to do a little bit more of that. Yep, that'll, that'll be a technique for the drawing board next time. That was kind of cool. I do like that. All right, so, um, or heat up, maybe drop a bigger chunk of wax on there and heat it up, I don't know. All right, so colors. What colors would look good with this? I think maybe some greens and blues. We got a lot of green on there. I want some colors. I've used so many colors. Um, or maybe some, maybe if I went with like a turquoise and magenta, that might be kind of cool. Uh, yeah, we'll try some of these. So what I'm going to do is just um, set them right set up in my little tray here. I think I probably ought to wipe the 
threads of these with some alcohol as well because and clean them off and maybe wax them because it feels like they want to kind of stick. Be careful about that because I don't want to ruin my beautiful supplies. And I'll use a pipette to put a little bit of color in the cap. Oh, that's probably how they got sticky in the first place. You know what? Probably shouldn't do that. Probably should put it in the... Uh, <laughs> yeah, now that I've already done it. Probably should put it right in the... Um, in the little well there. That's what it's there for. Not the cap. That's why it's sticky. Learn something new every day, don't you? There we go. And well, that's already in there, so I'm not going to worry about it. All right, I'm going to use a spray bottle of water just to wet down my paper. Hopefully that Mod Podge is dry enough. Uh, we'll find out, won't we? And I'm just going to grab a, uh, just a, my brush, one of my water brushes I use, one of my water media brushes I use for ink, not my watercolor ones. And I'm just going to start adding in some color. I think I'll do the magenta kind of over here and see how it resists things or doesn't. We'll, we'll see. I don't know if it's going to resist as well as watercolor. That's something I'm going to find out. I might have to wipe it off. It's resisting a bit. Let's go in a little bit of the green over here. I think usually, yeah, it works better with darker paint on lighter colors, I think. There we go. So I probably should have stuck with lighter crayons, but you never know until you try. Some of this color up there. There goes the furnace. Which is just appalling that the furnace comes on this time of year, but it has been such a cold, cold winter. Let's try some of this green. I like the way the green looks. The Mod Podge resist gives you a really subtle resist, which is kind of, with the India ink, which is kind of cool. I think, anyway. There we go. But it's there and it gives you that subtle texture, which is which is really fun. Um, give it another little spray and see how that looks. Oh, you know what? I don't know if it will work on this paper, but I'm going to try dripping some alcohol in there and see if I get that cool pebbly texture. Need a clean pipette. Oh, I know I have them. Oh, they're always out of reach. There we go. The clean ones are anyway. And dirty ones all over the floor. Oh, yeah. Check out the uh, what the alcohol is doing. Isn't that kind of cool? It's giving me a... This kind of mottled, bubbly look. I like that. I think that's kind of neat. I want a little more magenta. I'm going to do my brush. A little more magenta in this area here around this flower. The alcohol just kind of makes weird bubbles and textures, which I like. It doesn't work on all papers. Some papers it will just kind of sink in. I think because this paper is a little bit of sizing on it, it does react with it. On um, watercolor paper, it's a great technique on watercolor paper. And then I think I'm going to grab some Q-tips and actually wipe away any pooled ink on top of my uh, crayon here. So I don't know if this is a technique anyone's going to want to try. It's kind of messy. It's kind of fun. Um, I like it wipe it off the uh, Mod Podge a little bit. It almost gives you like a little batik type of look. It's um, with the Mod Podge, I think. And I'm sure as it dries, it will change. In fact, let me grab a tissue. I want to wipe off a little bit more because it should be sinking into the paper by now. So I should be able to wipe some off the uh, letters and the Mod Podge. I don't want to I don't want to wipe it off the paper though. The India ink does react a little differently than watercolor because it doesn't sink into the paper as well as watercolor would. And it also doesn't shift as it dries. Those little differences. People ask me, what's the difference? That's probably the big one. All right, I'm going to dry this and come back and we'll see what we want to do to finish it up. Back again, and I've got some pens because everything's looking kind of samey to me now. I've got all these different colors and resist going on, but I've kind of lost a lot. So what I'm going to do is go in with a uh, Micron pen. These are also available at Oriental Trading, and they have very uh, a variety of different, uh, different packs you can get them in. But I'm feeling like I just need to. In fact, I think I'm going to go in first with the brush tip. I want to have some really bold lines in here. I feel like I need to get my uh, sentiment back. So I'm going to go in and just start kind of adding a shadow on some of these letters. 
these micron pens are permanent but they're not alcohol based so you don't have to worry about them lifting up the Mod Podge and ruining the nib like you do. I wouldn't use these on top of pastel because they will pick up that but they're not going to pick up the uh, India ink or the Mod Podge because they're, uh, they're not alcohol based. So that's nice to know. But these do work really well for doing pen and ink and then watercoloring over. Um, and I know a lot of, uh, of artists that use these. I've used these pens, gosh, since I was a teenager. They're really great. They're Micron, M-I-C-R-O-N. They're called Pigma also. Pigma Micron, and um, they're made by Sakura. And I'm just gonna continue going around, adding shadows to the letters to bring them out. I know this is probably is not riveting, but it, you can see how it's really bringing the, bringing the letters out. So if you get yourself in a situation where you've done so much technique and you can't see what you've done, this is a great way to bring it back. Now I think I'm gonna go with a point one pen, and I mean, already one, sorry, one. And, uh, and that refers to the line thickness in uh, millimeters, is it, I think? I think the one is a one millimeter. The other ones aren't, well, something like that. Uh, yeah, it's a millimeter, I'm pretty sure. I'm just gonna go right over the cursive part. So it is sticking to the wax, which is nice. Whole left brain, right brain thing, I can't talk and write at the same time. <laughs> there. And then um, if I want, I can add some more doodling around the letters, maybe do some little like stitch marks. Or maybe even like over here where I've done like a little pattern, a little checkerboard pattern in here, I can enhance it. It's all up to you. You know, you can take your time, take more time than I am and really, you know, add to your design, do a little zentangling here and there, which is like kind of some doodling within the shapes. I'm limited to my videos. I don't want to make them too long and boring. So I try not to, uh, not to do too much. And you know, you just keep building it up. I don't want to do too much to the background and lose my words again, but I just thought that was a really fun, um, a really fun quote and something that we all bear in mind, especially with summer coming up because at least in my neck of the woods, you have short summers and the kids are home from school and you want to enjoy it. You don't want to, you know, squander that wonderful weather. You don't want to squander their childhood. You want to just be there and enjoy it as much as you can. And uh, really, life. It doesn't last forever. You want to enjoy it as much as you can. So there you have it. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please give me a thumbs up and consider subscribing. The subscri subscription button is right below the video. You can click on it and always get a, get a notice whenever I have something new to upload. If you enjoyed these products, please check out the links under the video. I will link to the products at Oriental Trading Company where I got them. And uh, thanks to Oriental Trading for providing me with supplies to do this mixed medium fun art journaling video series. Thanks again so much for watching. Until next time, happy crafting.